Hey, how you doing? Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to look at one of the most controversial figures in martial arts. Somebody who was, for a time, one of my heroes when I first got into the martial arts scene. And that's George Dillman. Now, I don't know what your views are on chi or pressure point fighting or no-touch knockdowns. Um, I am a huge cynic of anything to do with that. Um, I don't think that no-touch knockdowns work. I think it's all fraud. I think that chi-based systems don't work. <laughs> I think that it's pseudoscience, um, but I'm open to, to, to proof. If somebody can show me some evidence that this stuff actually works, then, then I'm, I'm very willing to change my mind. And when I speak to people about it, one of the things that they often say is that, you know, that you can't really measure this, but if you watch it, it clearly does work. So I thought what it might be interesting to do, rather than discuss whether Dillman's a fraud or not, is to look at a video of one of his seminars and see if we can spot any of the flags that we might associate with um, promoting pseudoscience or psychological manipulation. And we're not really going to critique his technique because, you know people have done that. Hundreds of people, thousands of people have done that before me, and I'm probably not going to add anything to it. But if we look at it from a different perspective, maybe, maybe it could be interesting. So let's pull up a video and, um, and have a look. So here we have World of Martial Arts, um, which is a, a fairly big YouTube channel. Um, I've done some videos for them in the past, a lot of the catch wrestling stuff. They are, they're pretty agnostic and pretty open about what they put out there. They don't really have much of their own personal opinion or spin on it. They simply act as a voice for the martial arts community. So there's some stuff on there that I, I love and I agree with. There's some stuff on there that I don't. And I'm sure you're the same. This is not a critique of WOMA. This is a critique of this particular video. So... Let's um, see what happens. Put this knuckle as if you're trying to get out under his nose. Now don't you go anywhere unless I make you. And you drill and you get... Now that's a really interesting thing there. We've, obviously we've come in mid-seminar and he's talking about this technique that he's going to do. And he says to the guy, don't you go unless I make you. And he's not saying that to that guy. <laughs> it sounds like he is, and everybody there thinks that's what's happening. But what he's actually doing is using the power of suggestion to everyone in the room, so that if this guy does move, everyone there knows that Dillman has moved him. This subconscious suggestion is something that I think we're going to see again and again and again. It's something that Dillman does a lot of. And it's something that we know works incredibly well. If you aren't familiar with the work of a guy called Darren Brown, then I strongly recommend you check him out. He's, he's an entertainer, a performer. He describes himself as a, as a mentalist. He does some amazing things. He mixes uh, acting with misdirection, with hypnosis, with the power of suggestion, with fairly traditional stage conjuring and comes up with some amazing things. And some of the things that he's done, making people believe things, is absolutely astonishing. I was a bit intimidated by the uh, subway system. I didn't want to go on it. And then someone said, you know, it's OK, take it. Take it, it's fine. So uh, I did, but it's amazing. And you, where did you live before this, then? I live in Staten Island now. Staten Island, which is just over the water, isn't it? Thank you very much, indeed. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Um, and we see a lot of the things that Darren Brown does in George Dillman. So let's go back to it and we'll see what else happens. But watch for these little points where Dillman is telling people what to believe or how to act or what's going to happen. Rather than just demonstrating it, explaining it, he's making it very clear beforehand what you should think. 
And whether you agree with him or not, that sinks into your subconscious and that informs your beliefs, whether you want it to or not. Let's get back in. Nothing. He feels only the action. But he does not get the neurological pain because there's not a nerve ending there. Let's talk briefly about pseudoscience. There's a lot of things that people try and portray as scientifically based or proven through objective evidence and they use the language of science and they try and pass things off as science when it actually isn't scientific at all. Um, and there are a number of red flags that you can, you can look for when looking at pseudoscience. Things like homeopathy, acupuncture, reflexology, osteopathy, chiropractic. Some of these things are using the language and the, the, the techniques of pseudoscience and this is what Dillman does here. He, he uses scientific sounding jargon or scientific terminology in ways that aren't technically correct. He's talking about neurological pain and about there being no nerve endings here. That's not true. Wherever you have skin, you have nerve endings. That's a fact. So he's trying to use scientific terminology to make people think that what he's doing is objectively based in, in, in fact. And it's not. But that's the ending of the large intestine meridian where the energy flows. When you touch his arm on large intestine... Ah! And let's just ignore the fact that he put a little gentle finger on, on his arm and then punched the guy in the nose or pushed really hard into his nose. Clearly that was going to make him move whether you're holding his arm or not. But the, the thing that I want to look at here is the fact that he's using this non-scientific language, ideas that are outside of kind of the realm of science, as if they're scientific. Talking about the body's meridians and chi. You know, great, I know within Chinese medicine we have these, these meridians and we've got these energy flows. They've never been proven to exist in a truly objective scientific manner. Yet, here we have Dillman talking about them as if they're scientific just like he did about the nerve endings that he was wrong about. He's just strengthening his authority and trying to make it look like he's doing something quite special here. And he's not. The fight is over. We're back to suggestion, straight away. He says, oh, the fight is over. But clearly it's not. He pushed this guy away. The guy stumbled backwards a little bit, stood back up and walked straight back out to him. That's not a fight that's over. That's a man whose nose is a little bit sore, and he's going to punch you. But J Dillman is, is telling you, you've seen with your own eyes, that this guy kind of flinched away, and Dillman put a lot of effort into making him do that. And he says the fight's over. It's not. But he's trying to make you believe that what he's done is in some way special. Immediately. You're going to do that. You're going to do that with each other, not so aggressively. You're going to have the person grab you. When they grab you, you can do this, you can do this. Large intestine meridian crosses and ends on each side of your nose. This is another lovely example of the, the power of subconscious suggestion. He's not saying, this is the technique that I want you to practice. He's saying, you are going to do this. And that's a really, really interesting choice of language that he's using. These words are very clear. You will do this. He's not saying, this is the technique, this is how it works. This is excellent to teach women in a rape situation because if they're knocked down on their back, the man has to have one arm on the ground. I have a real issue with anyone that tries to justify what they're teaching in terms of real-world self-defense when it isn't actually fully grounded in that in in the self-defense you know we we know all about things that work and things that don't and trying to portray something that is clearly 
If not fraudulent, then incredibly technical. Fraudulent. As potentially life-saving, using anecdotes as if, as if they're evidence is, is just downright dangerous. And I think as martial artists, those of us that actually train in stuff that we know works, boxing, Muay Thai, uh, catch wrestling, BJJ, wh whatever it is, you know, the stuff we train in, a lot of that, the HEMA arts, this stuff is based in physical actions that we have tested again and again and again to the point where we know they work. And it's our duty to kind of put that out there and to defend the idea of making sure stuff works against genuine resistance as a way of justifying it ahead of crap like this. And I think that... Um, I'm teetering on the edge of quite a, quite a significant ramp, so I'll try and I'll hold back. I'll stop. Let's see where he's going with this. And if we were on the back and he had an arm on the ground, and it were this arm, I only have to touch it as I touch here. But he's just done that and nothing happened. But he's telling you how effective it is. It's this suggestion running through everything he's doing. He's telling you how, how effective this is. Rather than just doing it and showing you, he's telling you. We spark between the two. No, we don't. And the person will fly off you. You practice that back in your dojo. We spark between the two and the person will fly off you. Clearly, I mean, he's, he's just done it. The person didn't fly off him. But he's saying you can practice that back in your dojo. The, the clear implication here is that you need to work on this to make it work. And you can do that back in your own dojos. But the kind of the hidden implication here is that that won't happen here because you need to practice it back in your own dojo. So if it doesn't happen here in this demonstration, in this seminar, that's okay. It doesn't mean it isn't real. It just means that you haven't quite got it right yet. It's more of the suggestion. It's more putting the blame of the technique failing on the people doing it rather than on the technique itself. The person will go off to the side of the arm because this arm will bend in. As I do this, you'll see that this arm will want to bend on you and he'll fall off that direction. Without touching the arm, nothing. He still feels it, but you're not going to get a release. And he probably didn't expect the shock he was going to get because that's the shock that takes place. He thought, I can take that. Your opponent will too. The minute you touch and go, the spark flies, am I correct? Yes. At this point, anything... The guy's clearly not going to disagree with him in the middle of his own seminar. He's gone along there. He's wearing his, his, his black short-sleeved gi top with his name embroidered on the back. He's clearly buying into this. I suspect he's paid quite a lot of money to be at George Dillman's seminars. He's not going to stand up there, experience what um, the Grand Master himself is doing and say, no, I didn't feel it. Just... You know, people do this all the time. We know if you put them in front of a group and tell them to say something, they'll say it. And that's exactly what's just happened. This is a psychological trick. This is not a real technique. The thing I wanted to do if I... You'll notice there that Dillman is holding the arm and pushing the nose. Nothing's happening. So he's just proving that it isn't working. But one of the other flags from the pseudoscience language that we're going to be looking for is that... He, he changes what he says and he makes up explanations on the fly to kind of justify what's happening around him. One of the other things that you'll quite often see people doing is if they're demonstrating something like this and it isn't working, they're not getting the response they want, they'll just pick someone else and they won't make a big deal about that, they'll just go around. And someone like Dillman will be looking at the room, reading the room, trying to work out who's really there, who's, who's kind of nodding away, what, watching. Someone who believes, someone who's already accepted the suggestions that he's put out there, and he'll demonstrate on them. And that's something that Dillman does a huge amount of. If I want to just drop on stomach vibe or hit on the neck, he's going to fall. You have to watch because he would go down head first. You have to watch that standing because their head's going to go like that, and you do not want them to fall and injure them. You see, he's telling you what's going to happen. All you're going to do is have the person grab you. Touch him at the nose. Nothing. Touch here, and you got control of the situation. Now, you will notice that this time, 
Dillman started off by saying, if you do this, they'll fall backwards. You're going to have to catch them. And he looked around and he went to someone else. And as he did exactly the same technique that hadn't just worked on, on Dave with his personalised gi, it's done exactly what he described on this guy here. He's obviously telling you how to react. This is just... It's criminal, is what it is. You got control of the situation. If you hit, if you hit the arm and go here, this move is in kata. Which kata, George? Which kata is it in? Almost everything is in a kata somewhere. It will put the person out, but the whole arm will cramp up on you because you have struck a pressure point and you've struck a pressure point. Two pressure points, the pain meets in the middle. When you do one pressure point, the pain is localized. When you do two pressure points, it meets in the middle. This the first time I had it done on me was by Ho Han Sokin in 1972. He rubbed okay. me here and More punched anecdotes. me in lung one, and when I went down, I was afraid to look at my own arm. I actually thought it was broke. I told one of my students, this is interesting. he broke my arm. What do you mean, they said, where did he break it? I said, the elbow, the elbow's gotta be, I was afraid to even look. It felt like he went <laughs> and took it in half. This is interesting, and, but it's not interesting because of the technique. It's interesting because of the psychological effect that he's using here. What he's doing is he's giving the audience permission to, to, to overreact. He's basically saying, I, George Dillman, the Grand Master, the man here, the person you've all paid good money to come and see, I thought my arm had been broken when this happened to me. It was so painful. So it's okay if you do that too. He's giving people permission whilst planting the seeds in their mind that this is going to happen and that it's okay to overreact to it when it does. And um, I don't know if we get to see them all putting the technique on, but I bet you that one or two of those people went completely over the top in their reactions. Let's, um, let's keep going for a little bit and then I'm going to stop because I think we've, we've covered almost all of the things that I want to cover. Um, but... Let's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Let's go and see what he's got. The pain will meet in the middle twice the amount of pain. So when you do one pressure point here, you do one pressure point here, the pain's really coming this way, trying to meet each other. How does it know which way to Everybody go? Everybody get up and do that real quick. I don't know if you've come across this, if, you, if you're grappling at the moment, there's kind of this thing that's swept through that when, when you, the coach has finished explaining what move you're going to do, he goes, one, two, three, clap, and you, then you get on and do it. And <laughs> I quite like Dillman's way of making them give him a round of applause after explaining a technique. Look, I'm not, I'm not going to go in anymore because, you know, there's not much doubt in my mind and in the, the mind of the wider martial arts community that this man is a fraud. Um... If you've got some evidence or you've got a personal experience of this, I'd love to hear it if you th think differently. But I think Dillman's a fraud and I think that he uses an awful lot of very deliberate language and he uses either knowingly or unknowingly some very specific psychological techniques to make people really kind of believe and, and kind of, I don't know, internalize what he's doing so that they they buy it and I think it's dangerous and I think it's criminal um, but I'd love to know what you think um, do you think Dillman's a fraud have I completely missed the point is there something going on here that I just don't see or or am I right do you agree with me would one nice solid right hook end the, the whole thing let me know. Stick something in the comments. And, um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Fight team!